Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of, out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture, where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them, and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, where I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous saviour. So then, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when people will no longer say, as surely as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites up out of Egypt. But they will say, as surely as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of Israel up out of the land of the north and out of all the countries where he had banished them. Then they will live in their own land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord had told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. So, Father, help us to press into the wonder that your Son became flesh and dwelt among us, that we may know the joy and peace that is promised in him through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do take a seat. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah on page 783. Because this is the, one of the great prophecies that would have been, as I mentioned, so prominent uh, in the minds of the Jewish people. But before that, who was the shortest man in the Bible? Bildad the Shuhite. Shuhite. And the second shortest was Nehemiah. 
<laughs> what do jokes do? Jokes, when they work, which clearly they haven't just yet, which is a shame because there's a few more coming. They, they, they kind of set your mind on a course and then things change. That's kind of how they work. You're expecting an answer or you're, you're left, because it's a joke format, you're thinking, what's going to happen? What's the surprise? Now, it might be a groan that it brings rather than laughter uh, to, to your voice, but um, Christmas is about the unexpected happening. History is heading in one way, and then suddenly things change. Today, in the town of David, the Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. See, for those shepherds in the fields, the glory of God shone around but also the glory of God was in those words, the message. The three ways in which the glory of God is revealed. The glory of God is this, first of all, we have a true shepherd. Those shepherds in the fields nearby were not the only shepherds. One had been born in Bethlehem. So many of the prophecies are of a true shepherd. It's Bethlehem, the town of David, the shepherd who became a king. And in the Bible, there's a strong link between kings and shepherds. Kings shepherd the people. But for Israel's history is full of false shepherds. Jeremiah talks about those who destroyed and scattered the sheep of my pasture. And so God promised that he himself would shepherd his people. He himself, we're told, would tend for them and care for them. That's what the, the false shepherds weren't doing. So God himself, he says, I myself will be your shepherd. Now, if you know anything about sheep, they're left by themselves, they do not thrive. Sheep left by themselves get completely lost completely stuck and uh, don't last that long you see that one there's a rescue story wasn't there a little while ago of that sheep they kind of stranded under a cliff in Scotland which had about four years worth of of a wool on it thankfully now thriving somewhere sheep what do we do left to ourselves we get ourselves lost and, and, and societies and people we look for people who will guide us and care for us and tend for us but no one does it perfectly. That's why God himself has come, the true shepherd, to tend and care for his people. The glory of God is this. God is the true shepherd. Okay, joke break. Um, how do we know the apostles drove a Honda car? Because they're all gathered together with one accord. Some of you, if you know humble cars, won't get that at all. Okay, let's go seasonal. How did Mary know how heavy Jesus was when he was born? There was a way in a manger. Oh. <laughs> no, disapproval over here, I'm afraid. <laughs> the glory of God is there. Secondly, the Messiah has come. Messiah, the Christ. The one full of the Spirit who had put things right. Jeremiah 23, verse 5. The days are to coming, declares the Lord, when I'll raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. More literally, it's not just he'll do what is just and right. He will work justice. He'll work righteousness in the land and he's called verse 6 the Lord our righteousness the Lord our righteous saviour as Messiah God has come to us and he's just he does what's right he's righteous he's, so he does what's right when God's sight he brings what is right to the world and he lives the righteous life the righteous perfect life that we cannot live ourselves. 
I don't know how organised you are with your Christmas dinner uh, cooking, whether it's chaos in the kitchen or whether it's neatly timetabled out. Uh, three minutes past this hour, you do this and you turn the temperature to this degree in the oven or so what it is. If it was me, it'd be more the, the mess side of things. And if I did too much of that, Caroline would look in the kitchen and banish me, which that's why I don't volunteer anymore, you see, because I know I'll get it wrong. So Caroline can do it all. But what does God do at Christmas? He, he sees the mess we are making. He rolls up his sleeves and says, I'll do it for you. That whole being human thing, you're clearly not doing a good job of it. I'll do it for you. Jeremiah 23, 3 talks about gathering the people back where they'll be fruitful and increase in number. What does that remind you of? Be fruitful and increase in number? It's a promise to well, Abraham, but back to Adam and Eve to be fruitful and increase in number. In other words, what God has planned for humanity, he is bringing about himself. God is come to us in Jesus, our Messiah, and as Messiah, he lives the perfect, righteous life. That is how he is our saviour. The glory of God, the Messiah has come. Okay, last jokes. Um, how do we know the ancient Egyptians played tennis? These are all Bible-themed jokes, by the way, in case you weren't worked out. How do we know the ancient Egyptians played tennis? Because Moses served in Pharaoh's court. Uh, think of Moses. How do we know Moses wore a wig? Sometimes he was seen with Aaron, and sometimes without. Aaron, hair on. And one very applicable to us. What's the difference between St. George and Rudolph? You'll find one slaying the dragon, the other dragging the sleigh. Oh. <laughs> These are definitely going into the not to be repeated category. <laughs> That's Christmas. You've got to groan in the jokes. <coughs> and the final glory of God. Do you know how much glory there is in that reading from the gospel? The glory shines around. And uh, the angels say, glory to God in the highest. And the shepherds run off to Bethlehem and come home, glorifying God for the things they had seen. So much glory. Because God has come to lead us home. You see, the, the shepherds met the Lord, the, the Lord God, our righteous saviour. They met the living God there lying in a manger in Bethlehem. And they were told they went home glorifying God. There's also a sense in when they went home as they went to Bethlehem. Because the whole universe, all things were created that we might find our true home with God. God, come to be with us, our Emmanuel. Jeremiah 23, 7 to 8 says that when the Lord comes, he'll gather his people back to himself from the far off nations where they've been banished, the exile since Eden, since the days of Eden. We've all been exiled since then. But the Lord has come to draw us home. I hope you all have some gifts to open up later today if you haven't opened them already. I know most of us probably can uh, exercise enough self-control to wait a few hours till after church. But the greatest gift, of course, isn't the things we open, it's the people we spend time with. That's what home means. And the greatest gift isn't just what Jesus brings. It's he himself is the gift. Our Emmanuel the Lord come to be with us. Our true sense of being home is when we find him as our Emmanuel. So I'm going to end with not a joke, you'd be pleased to hear, but a poem, a poem by uh, G.K. Chesterton. You'll see the words on the screen, so you can follow it along as well. Uh, just read it on the screen. But let me read this poem. Uh, G.K. Chesterton reflects on what it means to find home. This is called The House of Christmas by G.K. Chesterton. <clears throat> there fared a mother driven forth out of an inn to roam. 
In the place where she was homeless, all men are at home. The crazy stable close at hand, with shaking timber and shifting sand, grew a stronger thing to abide and stand than the square stones of Rome. For men are homesick in the homes, and strangers under the sun, and they lay on the heads in a foreign land whenever the day is done. Here we have battled and blazing eyes, and chance and honour and high surprise, but our homes are under miraculous skies, where the Yule tale was begun. A child in a foul stable, where the beasts feed and foam, only where he was homeless are you and I at home. We have hands that fashion and heads that know, but our hearts we lost how long ago, in a place no chart nor ship can show under the sky's dome. The world is wild as an old wife's tale, and strange the plain things are. The earth is enough and the air is enough for our wonder and our war. But our rest is as far as the fire drake swings, and our peace has put in impossible things, where clashed and thundered unthinkable wings round an incredible star. To an open house in the evening, home shall men come. To an older place than Eden, and a taller town than Rome. To the end of the way of the wandering star, to the things that cannot be and that are, to the place where God was homeless and all men are at home. Let's pray. Help us, Lord, to glorify you as we meditate on the glory of Christ born for us. May we delight in Christ, our Messiah, our righteous Saviour. <clears throat> Help us to marvel that we have a true shepherd who does what is right, who tends and care for us. And may our restless hearts find their true home, knowing you, the eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat>